Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So I've done a Christmas special, I thought I would do a New Year special. And I've mentioned before I'm going to have one of my friends who's a celebrity in to make a wee guest appearance. It's quite um, nerve-wracking for me because he's a professional actor and I'm not. <laughs> so um, I've not told anyone who it is, I've kind of left it a surprise, but um, I'd like you to welcome Mr. Matt Costello. Hello, 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 hello. So, for those of you that know, you'll recognise him straight away, and for those of you that don't, um, what I know him best for is Steve the Bookie from uh, Still Game. And he's just, I've even got him into the mini scene, you see. Next, if I can just convince him to buy a, a classic mini, then he can help me strip this, and I can help him strip uh, his. <laughs> so, um, I oh. thought... I thought a bit of fun. I've got some <coughs> questions from Matt, and um, you've not told I'm, me about. I've not told them about. I'm putting them on the spot here, so you're seeing this firsthand. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. what I thought I would do first is I'll get Matt to introduce himself, and he can tell you a bit about himself. Hello, I'm Matt Costello. I play Stevie the Bookie in Still Game. It's a, a wee sitcom we have up here in Scotland to people that are watching from afar. But uh, we just finished the last series there, it's finished, it's over, it's going to be broadcast in February 2019, BBC digital channel called BBC Scotland on the 24th February, the last ever series of uh, Still Game. Uh, it's a new channel, it's a new channel, I mean, it's not going to go into your regular BBC, it's a digital channel, BBC Scotland digital. So. Have a swatch. Have a look, have a, have a swatch. So, I, it's quite an honour having Matt here for me because I know I'm, I first knew him from watching him on Still Game and then I knew him, we met through our kids and now we're friends. Um, and two of my favourite things, one you'll know, minis, the other Still Game. <clears throat> when it comes to Scottish humour and comedy, it's, it's brilliant. If you've not seen Still Game, search for it on YouTube or, or online and, and have a look. Um, and yeah, you'll love it. So, and I'm going to do this in one take, whether it's rubbish or not. So, um, right, are you ready for these um, these questions? I'm not even going to let you. Well, I'm not even going to let you. I don't know. I'm not even going to let you peek. I'll move my chair and I, I was quite. Uh, I was quite kind with them. So, right, the first one you've already answered. Us, just tell us a wee bit about yourself. Your favourite still game episode. My favourite still game episode uh, on the spot. Right away, I would have to say uh, seconds out. Jim Watt, ex world champion. You see that, didn't you? Uh, Jim Watt uh, boxing in the ring with me and Bobby the barman fighting over the pizza girl. Uh, what a laugh! That was filmed. We filmed that in uh, the. You know, Bell Houston Park in Glasgow has got a Palace of Art and there there's a big gym boxing mm. thing and the, the real boxing ring in the gym and stuff. And we were there the whole day with the big shorts with the fat belly on and punching away with Jim Watt. It was fantastic. And uh, we had a lot of laughs in that. I, th I remember most of the time you film still game, we have a laugh. The guys are great to work with, you I know. Love but them. Aye, one day you will, one, one day, day you will. Never know. Speak, mm -hmm. Speaking of fat bellies. <laughs> this, this was loose when I bought it a week before Christmas. I know. <laughs> been a good Christmas. I, I just did some stuff in there, didn't I? Actually. And this one, I still get starstruck. And um, I've got an idea of one of the things you're, you're going to reply about your favourite still game catchphrase. Uh, See you on the spot. <laughs> well, uh, no, I quite like the one that I do with Bobby is Feel the Burn, Bobby. Feel the Burn. Ah, and I like two pints, you prick, as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a lot of you, or a pint of Guinness. <laughs> a pint of Guinness. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot, there's too many to mention. Too, there is too right. many. Right. <coughs> so. right. Um, right. No, uh, no, not just still game, but your um, your favourite acting role or career highlight. Can't uh, be still game, but in general. You uh, know, it would be pretty much theatre would be playing Eddie Carboni in A View from the Bridge. Uh, 
by Arthur Miller, uh, Eddie Carboni, the the lead part in it. I played at the Lyceum in 2001, Royal Lyceum in Edinburgh, uh, directed by the late Kenny Ireland and had a cast of brilliant actors in it. And I remember that being the biggest at the time, and I've no talked it since. It was just one of the most powerful feelings. It was about immigrants coming from Italy to New York in 1930. Uh, and uh, playing the main guy, the uncle, who was kind of getting mixed up with his niece, falling in love with one of the guys that came to stay with him and all that. It's just a very, and it's very relevant today with the way certain people feel about uh, other people uh, coming in the country. Personal, my personal feelings is it's, it's a free world. Uh, we're all welcome, you know. Anyway, I mean, I lived in America for well, yeah. four years. Yeah, I was yeah, welcome there. there. And uh, <laughs> that play is so poignant for that, you know, and to think back on it, uh, I'd actually kind of done, you know, about the immigration thing uh, in my real life. Even, a, even as you tell it, to be that passionate about something, mm -hmm. it's your job, but it's, it's, your, yeah. it's your life as well. It's the same as Aye. if I worked on minis and didn't have to work, that would be, that'd yeah. be my idea. Thing. Which what I was thinking, I was saying <coughs> earlier, uh, that I watched a couple of your videos this morning. And the it's guys, yeah. the guys' clips <laughs> and the cars and all that. Well done, guys. Uh, funny stuff. Uh, well, good especially guys, the two boys at night, they were driving and he was filming. Yeah. And it was dark, it was funny. And uh, I thought, you see, passion, you know, the passion you have, I, I've witnessed it. Where you just live and breathe these cars, you know. Uh, I think it's admirable, and uh, it's like anything, you know, I'm passionate about acting, and you're passionate about these cars as well as your uh -huh. guys that subscribe to you, so... No, that's good nice. Minutes. That's good. So you're passionate so, about somebody, something. Somebody has to be. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be, and it's good, you know, obviously, we're passionate about our families, our loves, and life, you know, but it's a hobby or a pastime, you be that passionate about something, it's very important. Oh, yeah. It's no, really it's, good for you. Yeah. Um, your future, my future, your future career. Where do you, well, where, where are you going? Oh, I can't say, <laughs> but it's not looking good. No, <laughs> but, um, I got a wee message from a cousin last night, who was who found something that you know uh, about what could be coming up. It's first time hearing this as well. Uh, and uh, he said, "Is this you?" <laughs> and it's you know, my. Uh, and I said, I have arm sworn to secrecy, so uh, it, it's not for another year and a half, so I can't really say too much about it, but, it's you know, first. It's, a, <laughs> it's a wee tiny, tiny part in a big, big, big thing, <laughs> and it's not a very Cooper. Oh, well. <coughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see where that plans uh, yeah, That's the thing about acting, I don't know what's next for me, but I expect to be working you know, uh, this year in something, and the phone could go over my agent. It could be anything. It could be a, an advert. It could be a play. It could be a film, mm -hmm. TV thing. I just don't know. Yeah. I'd rather have had a normal job like this man. Uh, just <laughs> get your uh, wages in, you know, instead of waiting for something to happen. Uh, you get your wages on the life spends it. <laughs> <laughs> your, um, Right, you'll probably find this hard to answer for just one, because I'd imagine you've got a dose. But one of your favourite acting celebrities, or one of your favourite actors or actresses. Well, that's a good one, that's a good one. Do you know who I really like? And I've not seen him in this film, I saw it was on my Sky Movies. I need to watch it, too many things to catch on. Is Jeff Bridges. Oh. See, Jeff Bridges, I, I love what he does. It's uh, so deep what he does every time, you know. I think he's an aging hippie of uh, Jeff, but when he plays a part, he just puts a lot right into it. And I, I really, I remember him when I was a kid, a teenager watching Third of and Lightfoot was his first movie, Clint Eastwood. And then from then on, he'd done the Fisher came with Robin Williams and stuff. But uh, True Grit is the John Wayne film, isn't it? Mm. So I think that's the remake of that. I just saw it there and thought, I need to see that. But, uh, my, when I was at college, at drama school, uh, it was Robert De Niro and the usual. I never really was a fan of Al Pacino. I thought he was a wee bit too indulgent. Whereas Robert De Niro was... Uh, Robert just outgrew his thing, you know? Uh, 
So you change. I remember one time William Hurt. I loved him. Uh, John Hurt and the Midnight Express as well. But it changes. But uh, right now, being the festive season, I'm just <laughs> Will Ferrell and Elf oh, you're gonna and say that. banging off <laughs> the, yeah, gonna the locker. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of good people out there. I, I, I'm, yeah, there's no, like music. I, I, I don't watch anything. I, 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 I thought I would, uh, like I say, if I gave you these in advance, you'd have time to prepare. I know, I, I have not that, that, That's half the fun. Um, right. On to cars. Cars? Oh, <laughs> cars. Ah, yeah, okay. So, um, I'm rubbish with cars, by the way, but I've had a few crackers. Oh, I'm, at, so I'm not going to question it, don't worry. It's, yeah. it's the funny stories I want. How do you fix an alternator <laughs> in a mini? <coughs> <coughs> Is that where you pretend to cough to finish there? <laughs> <laughs> right, have you ever owned or driven a classic mini? Uh, I don't know if it was a classic, but it was a wee tiny. I have driven one and it was... Uh, a second year at college, a guy called Simon Christie, it was his stage name, his real name was Walter, uh, now lives in Minneapolis, a lovely friend of mine, good guy, I haven't seen him for so many years, he's been in the States now for over 20 odd years, but we were good friends at time, did plays at the festival and stuff, and he had a mini, and he gave me a shot of it, and what I remember uh, is the accelerator pedal, it was just bare metal. Is it always or is it with the pads on them or what? The, the, it has got a pad on, but nine times it uh, depends on the, the age, but nine times out of ten they fall off or wear off. So right. Well, the, the ones I've got are pure metal. I remember driving this car. It was a red, tiny, nothing on it, but a wee tiny, tiny car. And I couldn't believe it. He says, put your foot in the accelerator pedal. And I was like, where is the accelerator pedal? The size was about 50 oh, pence piece. But when I touched it, and I was like, whoa! And the speed and pick up of the thing, you know? I can just imagine the wee tiny wheels going like that, and the motor, oh, help me! Yeah, an animation. But yeah, I've driven a Mini, and uh, I, I was struck with the speed, the acceleration in that wee car. It was a flyer, you know, the noise it makes. The uh, A-series engine, the noise it makes, it's just unique. There's nothing. The passion, <laughs> see? It's, I just died. The passion. <laughs> I like it. Um, hi, well, hi. you know the plan was, and the plan still is, I'll get you out and Ed for a wee drive. Excellent, aye. Every time I plan something, he, he breaks down and something else. So he's needing a few bits and pieces, but oh, just... If it stopped raining for ten minutes, I could get stuff done, but we'll all get, we'll all get that done, hopefully. And a follow up to this. Ed, Ed, you can want him to like it. Well, you know, it you from there. Couldn't have planned that. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> um, your first car. My first car? Oh, hi. Uh, it, was a, a, it was an Austin Princess wedge. I loved that wedge shape in the back of the day. In fact, I drove by uh, Lockerbie, disaster. With that, the the next day, right by that, uh, and I'll never forget that. But that that was the car that I had then. I was doing in Kendall doing pantomime, and I, I drove up with that. And I had that for a couple of years. A big beast, you know. But it was brown. Well, I believe that the Austin Princess did that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was a version of the A series engine. Same engine as in the Mini. Is that same company? Oh right, of course. Um, and do you know, I only know this through watching Cole's channel and speaking to Cole, who's classic mini DIY, do you know what the Austin Princess was called in America? No. The Austin America. Oh, was it? <laughs> right, I was thinking of Allegro. So they've, given it a, they've given it a beefed up name, but it's the same car. Austin called America. Austin. Well, well, that's quite good, because it's part of the, it's the long lost. Of a long relation to the, the mini, I suppose. So you think that that was that the same? It's, a, it's, a, it's a version of the A series engine, unless I'm mistaken. So that must have been a, I'm sure that must have been a 1.6 I had. Because I know. Eight, no? 1.4? They, they can be changed. Um, with the, I think 1.4s, there was a version of 1.4. I don't know if they went to 1.6, but. That was 19. Was that? Fuck it, was 88, wasn't it? Aye. 88, aye. So that car I had was about. Like seven year old. Yeah. I'm sure there's a conversion you can do. There was a conversion that some done for. I know the miners, the Morris miners. I think that was a readily conversion. They could change that engine straight into that. Right. Austin, that, so, Austin, uh, uh, that was my first. I had a few others since. Well, here you go. Here's your next question, oh, right? Your favourite. Oh. That you've owned. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, a Buick 
Wildcat, 1964. It was beige. And I did buy it off an old woman in Pasadena. Well, That's the joke, you know. I bought woman. it off an old woman in Pasadena. That's the joke. My boss That's bought me it. I worked in a hospital at the time. Uh, and he was really, like, his grandparents were from Scotland and all that. And he was really, he took me under his wing and he, he says, I said, I don't have money to buy a car. <coughs> and he bought me one and I paid him up out of wages. And he, I went to it in Pasadena, old woman in the garage. The thing was immaculate. It was in pristine condition and I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought, what? And it, it was a bench seat. I was going to ask. Him bench I full bench at the front, uh, electric aerial. We have, it was a big flick switch. You flick the switch and the aerial came up and go, oh. And then the buttons at the side, uh, no, I'm at the wrong side here. And the left hand side. It would make the bench go <laughs> forward, backwards, up, down, and tilt the back as well, all the, all the things on the street. And it was an 1864 car, you know that? I'm talking, of, this was 1977, mm -hmm. uh, I was in America. Uh, and the thing was, in, she must have just kept it in there, you know, and it, it was so beautiful. And I ended up driving it, we, we wanted to drive across America, me and my two pals from London, or well, one for East Cabride, one for Bromley in London, uh, Cliff and Davy. And we drove up San Francisco, Reno, Nevada, Salt Lake City, Utah, Denver, Colorado. Went bust. We were meant to go to New York. We got, it took us four days to get to San Francisco. Normally that's like Glasgow, London, roughly, you know. But it took us all that time and we spent all our money in Reno and the casinos and, and stuff and just spending and hotels and I remember we went to see The Shining in San Francisco and uh, sold the Buick Wildcat in Denver, Colorado uh, to a guy who was just, eyes were popping out to get the flight money to fly home. Buick Wildcat 1964. It's, you know, it's amazing to see by asking you what your favourite car was, how it generates all the memories that come with it. Aye, it's aye. not just the car, it's yeah. takes you back and it's the same as music. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, I had a Thunderbird, a uh, uh, T-Bird, I bought that and it lasted Amazing. for two weeks and I was on the motorway, the 405 in LA and I heard it was like a sledgehammer banging my engine and I was like, huh, and the steering went all heavy and I pulled it over to the side and it was, the engine seized and I'd only had it for two weeks. I bought it off a guy called John Wayne, I swear not, his name was John Wayne. And, uh, a cowboy, basically. He was a cowboy, aye, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, I never, I never done anything with that car, he got pounded, and uh, I think the LAPD are still probably looking for me. But I just thought, no, I can't deal with that. You can cut that bit out. <laughs> no, no, don't. Right, your dream car. Dream money's, car. Money's no object. Well, I do like. Uh, I do like the old uh, Aston Martin DB, DB9 or that, DB9. Uh, my sons keep trying to swim me on there, the Ferrari, but I, I, I quite like the, the, the look of DB9. I'm a kind of old fashioned what car, car man. Mm. Smoky, green, aye, aye, aye. something like that. Aye. 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 I like the, the, the kind of cars I've ever had. I'm only uh, about 100 film parts away for you buying one of them. I've got a mini for sale. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got them. I've got plenty. It's my favourite. Right, your best classic car or mini story? Best classic car. I remember a, an old chap that I knew who had a. It was an Austin again. It was an Austin Riley. Oh, right. 1936, I think, it had the uh, flick out indicators. Right. Traffic eaters. Traffic eaters. Oh, I couldn't believe that. I mean, I, I was only, what, I was about 20 uh, when he took me around that. Oh, I remember the smell of the leather. Uh, it was a bucket seats as well, you know, and it was just such a work of art. We quarter lights, we tilted things and stuff like that. It was black. and. Uh, that one stuck in my mind, that car, for some reason. I really liked the idea of it. You know? <laughs> Indicators. The Morris Miner out there, Misty. 
three dates. Those, Does it really? And it was the next year they came out because I went to see one that had the, the trafficators. All oh, right. I mean, even, uh, trafficators, that's what they are. What is, when was the first uh, mini made? What, in 1959. 59? Was it? Mm -hmm. And it's sitting in the British Transport Museum in London. Is it? Just, just inside London. I'd love to go and see it, but um, it's just sitting there. And, Ah, I was asked that the other day, I thought, I don't know when it was. It's the 60s, it must have been the 60s. Nin 1959. What about, uh, what about uh, Michael Caine's, uh, told you just to knock my bloody door? The Italian up. job, that was the 60s, wasn't it? Put me on the spot again. Quiz. Quiz. 1960. I should know that, but I don't. It was the 60s, wasn't it? Late 60s. I'll go 67. No. 69. 69's pinging into my mind for some reason, but mm. I'll put, I'll, I can put it on. That's the good thing about doing these. I can stick it on after that. Right, the last question. If some of these guys want to ask some questions, will you come back and do another wee bit of this? Absolutely, I will. Yes. I've got you out in Ed. Yeah. I'd love to get you in Eleanor, but that's a few years ago. Is this Eleanor here? Yeah. This is Eleanor. Oh this, my goodness me, I was, thought she was in better shape. This was what? Oh, what? She used to be like when she was previously restored. Oh, you've got your work cut out there, my dear. Yeah. Yeah. You need to get a couple <laughs> of the boys up to help you. So, um, all right, so if you've got any questions for me or Matt, stick them in the, the comments. Happy to answer them. We'll do a Q&A session. If we get enough questions, yeah, we'll, we'll answer them. Um, <clears throat> what, um, what I thought I would do, obviously after a thousand subscribers, I would do another giveaway. And it's getting close to 12.75, which is obviously a magic number for for minis, because it's the, the Cooper engine size, and it's the engine size they're, they're finished on. Quiz for you, when was the last classic mini made? Nineteen... You got that bit right. <laughs> right, okay, nineteen... Classic Mini? Classic Mini, yeah. Was there one made after the Classic then? Well, the BMW Minis. Oh, no, I hear Robbie said the way they So the, the first, I think yeah. the first, um, was it early 2001, the first, cla uh, the first modern Mini rolled out the factory. Right, and so... There was an agreement with, when BMW bought it over, they had to cease production of the Classic Mini. 1997. 19... no, 2000. Oh. Oh, was it? Just before they put that out? I think there was like, there was a matter of months between this rolling off the line and, aye, aye, and, the, and the new one coming off. You need to watch the documentary, it's quite interesting. Aye, aye. That's, that's quite interesting. You know, it's like, I can still watch many stuff all day. Um, ah, that, I like them. <clears throat> right, so yeah, so the giveaway. See, get, get sidetracked talking about minis. Um, what I thought I would do is I'd do a few bits and pieces and I plan to do more throughout the year. Once um, I've just not had much time over Christmas, etc. But what I thought I would do is two parts to it. I want to do a thing to do with minis and a thing to do with, with Mark coming here. So the first thing that I thought would be quite good and quite unique is I've asked Mark and he's kindly he's kindly agreed to sign two DVDs this not game. So what we've got series five and series six. Those ones because those are one of my two favourite seasons so far. Um, so what I'm going to ask him to do, I'll grab a pen, mm -hmm. is I'll get him to sign each of the cases and each of the discs. The Jim Walt one is in there somewhere. Okay, so this is to the, the giveaway. The giveaway, yeah. Okay. But the person that wins, if they want their name put on it, we can get that done, we can arrange for that to okay. be done as well. Yeah. Uh, Unique prizes, can't get this anywhere else. He's doing one for me as well. There we go. Stick your signature on there for me as well. Because if it's anything like me, I'll end up losing the disc in the case. Okay. 
So there you go. Feel the burn, Stevie the bouquet, Matt Costello. And that's permanent marker, so it's not coming off. These DVDs are Region 2, so um, they can only be watched in Europe. But I'm happy for anyone to enter uh, the competition. Um, I'm happy to post it anywhere, pretty much. <laughs> he thought he was only coming along for a coffee as well. <laughs> Uh, what Matt has brought along as well that I didn't know, I'll let him show you. And That's funny the way I've signed that because of the whole happened. <laughs> this, this is a collector's look. Feel the burn. Steve. <laughs> So, oh yes. Uh, so I'll let uh, well, I'll let I'll let Matt explain what he's brought for me and what yeah. for you. The, these are uh, from the last series ever of Still Game. They're mm, Steve the Bookies slips in the bookies, and I've actually got. I'm keeping that one. It was the last bet that Winston put on, but these were under it, and give them one to you. Mm -hmm. I'll yep. sign that, and then I can give you that one because they're. Rare new series is finished, and this is Stevie Barrett's uh, original bookie series. Unique, slips. priceless. And they were in uh, episode five of the last series, so I'll send that to whoever you thought. We'll get a message put on that that's uh, personalised to them. Nobody's got them. No, uh, production gave me them, so they are uh, quite a. Unique. And if you're a still game fan, for still game people, or a Mark Costello fan, priceless. People elsewhere might be like, that. what is still game? I don't know. I just want to know about many Coopers. I called my son Cooper. I must have something. <laughs> some many blood, some in the blood. Well, yeah. One of my sons, that one's Casey. Casey. Okay. Well, they're watching. Aye. Um, okay. Right, so what else I've done, I thought I would do, I've just got a couple of these made up. And they're just DB Mini. DIY mugs with a YouTube bit on the back. Quite quirky, um, but I'm going to give away two of them. And again, I'll post it anywhere, so I'm happy for anyone to, to enter it. So we've got the. Don't ask me how this box goes back together, I'll sort that out in a bit. Um, so, what have you got a. What, is it a question? A question. How is it? Some is it a draw? What is it? Uh, what we'll do is we'll get comments. We'll get comments again in the video, and we're going to split the split the two questions to what you want to do. You can enter both. You can enter one just to keep them separate. So um, what I'll do, I'm going to keep this open till the 20th of January because it's a week before Bingley Hall. Um, I can talk about Bingley Hall later on. Hopefully, I can meet up some of you guys there because I'm going to make the trip down. But what I'll do, um, split the questions, put them in the comment, after the 20th we'll get the draw and we'll get all the people picked and we'll get all the things personalised and sent out. So, for the still game DVDs and the unique betting slip, what I want you to do is tell me what celebrity you've met and what funny story comes with that. Good, 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 like it. Um, if yeah, think you you've not met a celebrity, make it a relation or make it somebody you've known. So. Because I don't want to single anyone out, I want everyone to be, be part of it. So put that in the comments, and for the mugs, um, you can. I'll, I've got one question here, but I've actually I'll split it into two. You can tell me either the best deal you've had on a car, or the worst deal you've had on a car, and what's went wrong. And that's ten are for the, the mugs giveaway. And um, like I say, the closing date for that will. Do as the twentieth of January, a week before Bingley Hall. Just in case someone that wins it's going down there, I can bring it to them personally. Um, if not, I'm happy to post it anywhere, so that's fine. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. I'm going to be getting on with Eleanor again in the next few weeks and get the videos coming back again. I've already built the jig, um, but I've got all the videos to edit, so they'll be coming to you soon. And then I've got plans of what I'm doing for the other cars. 
I'll bring them to you when they come. What I would just like to say to Matt is a huge thank you for coming here because, like okay. I said to you, um, cars and <laughs> feel the burn. Cars and still game. Uh, just uh, I love them both. If I had, if I could live in a mini and watch still game, <laughs> my, my life, my life's complete. Pop up so, screen. <laughs> so um, yep. Thanks very much for coming. You're welcome. And um, we'll see you again when when Ed's running. Uh, get your questions to me and get them to to Matt. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. <laughs>